course, of course. So today we're conducting a bilateral combo with Japanese Ground Self-Defense Forces. Uh, the mission we have today is transport 20 ISO containers from Naha Military Port all the way to Kinser. Today we have uh, five vehicles, four of them with PLST trailers. So we can take a total of nine uh, containers at once. Um, of course, it's gonna be one a trip that is only gonna have two containers. And depending on the situation and how the day goes, will determine which convoy will that be. So the way there, we arrived approximately at 2100, that's when we left here, 2100. Uh, the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Forces were waiting for us here at the gates. Uh, they were providing headlights and taillights for us, uh, so we met them at the gates, the vehicles came in and we head to Naha Military Port. Uh, of course, we have five LVSRs, four of them with trailers, so we could move nine containers at once. Uh, once upon Naha Military Port, we waited a little bit, maybe under an hour, uh, for the containers to load down and then we were going to do nine containers at once, nine containers and then two containers. Uh, but we decided to do it a little bit faster, we stay flexible and we moved two containers the first trip. And I think that those little decisions, right, staying flexible and planning is nothing, planning is everything, is what helped us out to complete the mission. So we head there to Kinser, we unloaded the first two containers and we head back. Uh, by the time we came back, we only had to load uh, three more containers and we head again all the way to Kinser and then it was just home stretch come back those last nine and head to Kinser to unload them um, Another thing that we changed at the beginning is that we were only using uh, Marine Corps HE equipment We have plenty of HE when we were over there at Naha Military Port, but not in Kinser uh, So once in Kinser, I saw the Japanese had an, an standby an HE standby and I asked them if they could help us They asked their commander. He got approved um, so that also facilitated the process and I mean, not many people thought we were going to be able to move or complete this mission in one night, but we did. And it was because of that, because of the help of the Japanese and staying flexible. So my unit, Third Transportation Battalion Alpha Company, is assisting with moving uh, these 20 ISO containers in support of King Sword. Um, these 20 ISO containers were coming from the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Forces, um, which I think is in part uh, why this mission is so important and it has such a big impact on both forces. Um, it was an American ship taking um, Japanese ISO containers, right? Uh, we were using American equipment, American vehicles to transport this uh, equipment to the ISO containers to the Japanese in Camp Kinsor so they could be able to continue with the operations during Kinsor. Everything we can do more realistic uh, when it's close to combat, right, is just going to benefit our Marines and us in the way how we react towards a crisis. Uh, I mean, we have been improving. Resolute Dragon a couple of months ago, it was the first time uh, we did a bilateral COC with the Japanese, first time ever. So we definitely are improving. And for King Sword, it was my first time interacting with the Japanese ground self defense forces as we did. And they are as invested in these operations as we are. Um, so overall, I think the Marine Corps and the United States government makes a really good job working with their allies. Um, and of course, here in the Japanese, we have been working with them, but not as good as we're currently doing. Um, it was the first time I see the Japanese uh, ground self-defense forces so involved in our exercise. And while we were going during the combos, they were just asking me, okay, so what does this word mean, right? The different words we use for the convoys, our SOPs, all that good stuff, so they could understand. And they would tell me, well, we do the same thing, we just call it a different way. Um, so it helped me to realize that we're not that different and working together is definitely not as difficult as long as we're willing to work together. Of course, of course, I think first the flexibility um, and the responsibility and the, con and the different relationships we have in this exercise. Um, for example, the first brief I did, it was in front of approximately 50 people, right? It was the first time I briefed uh, so many people at once and it was divided. The room was on the left for the Japanese and the right for the Americans, right? One commander of each representing. Um, so that was good. Uh, I did a PowerPoint presentation explaining the schema maneuver and it went very well. Um, so that was the first interaction we had with them. That was a surprise. I thought I was going to be briefing probably my max 10 people, not 50 right so that was good understanding that they're really giving importance to these operations we are doing and they're as invested as we are uh, once the operation started they were as excited as I was right so the energy was mutual we were happy to work together we were happy to see how the other ones work um, and happy to understand that we're allies here in the Pacific so the main takeaways from these convoys was the flexibility and stamina of our Marines. Uh, throughout the night, they were in high spirits. They weren't tired, they weren't falling asleep. They were motivated and looking forward to accomplish the mission as much as we did. Um, and once again, the Japanese amazing allies, they were the entire night as excited as we were to accomplish the mission uh, and on both parts. 
uh, we did our best to learn as much as we can from each other. I think that the biggest learning for me is that they actually want to work with us. That was a surprise. I always thought that they were like their guests here, but they didn't really want to. But I felt they really want our presence. They really want to be at this. It's like for the first time I felt it was in the Japanese or Americans, it was us as a team working together to accomplish one common mission. Um, so definitely that's a big learning and how humble they were and willing to work with us and the respect they had towards us and our operations. That's probably the main takeaway and one of the biggest learnings I will have and my attitude that will change towards the future operations. Yeah, it makes me feel important that for the first time I'm making a difference, um, that I'm doing my job, that I see these Marines working hard, doing what they're supposed to, and I can see what we're supposed to do, right? I can see what, what our Marines are trained to do, and they're very good at it. And as an officer, you don't always get the chance to be with them, to be in the field, to do that type of stuff. So when I do, I really enjoy it. And I'm grateful that this opportunity, uh, it was me, the one that had the chance to be the convoy commander for this mission. It prepares them very well when it comes to international relationships, right? Even within here in Okinawa, we usually do our own convoys and our own operations. And I was talking to my Marines, some of them were very experienced, and it was the first time they deal with the Japanese, and they are so invested as we were on this mission. Um, so definitely it showed us that we have allies, and they are looking forward to work with us. And I was able to see them, interacting with them. We were unloading the vehicles, moving the vehicles, right? Because they were parts controlled by the Japanese and parts controlled by the Americans. Uh, but it was, it was kind of beautiful to see them working in harmony. And I think that's the main takeaway. That's why we're able to finish a mission of such a smooth way, because we work in harmony. It might sound cheesy, but it makes you feel something greater than yourself. Right. Uh, if I would have stayed back home and never joined the Marine Corps, I would have probably never been the opportunity of doing this. Right. Uh, but it makes you feel important. And the same thing I told these Marines, they are making a big difference here in the missions we have in the Pacific, in Okinawa, uh, and with our allies. Uh, so it definitely makes you feel part, not only Americans, not only Japanese, it's of a friendship, of an alliance. Um, and it's just a phenomenal feeling. Yeah, I'm looking forward to keep working with them. Uh, and sometimes for the Marines to stay motivated, they need to know a why, right? And, and that's like, why are we doing this? Why we do all this stuff? And it's easy. We are third transportation battalion within CLR-3, within the MLG. And our main goal is to move the Marine Expeditionary Forces. We provide the mobility they need to accomplish the mission. Um, and in this specific operation, we went in farther. We not only move the MEF, but we also move our allies, the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Forces. Um, so definitely our unit as, a as a such is moving a lot and is bringing a lot to the table. And, and I think that the mobility needed to accomplish a mission, to move between the island change, it's in part thanks to us, to the motor transport companies. And it was a wonderful experience to be part of this convoy. Um, and I think the, the, like the cherry on the top was at the end of the mission, right? Uh, when I went and talked to the colonel, Japanese colonel, and he gave me a coin. It was the first time I got a coin within the Marine Corps, so it was very meaningful. Uh, and, and I remember that when I first briefed the mission, was to move 20 extra containers, I come back home safety here to Foster and he said, uh, I'm just hoping that you accomplish your mission and all of you and your Marines and equipment go back home safety to Foster. 